The total cost of damage caused by malware in 2015 was about $500 billion. In 2019, that jumped to $2 trillion, and it's expected to hit $6 trillion in 2021. To put that into perspective, that's more than the entire retail sales of all of the United States. Needless to say, there is a lot of money being made in cybercrime and malware, and it's only going to increase. And so I figured for this episode of Decoder, a series here on the channel where I explain a new piece of tech regularly, we should dive into what malware actually is, the different types of malware that there are, and the ones that you're more likely to run into, and then how they work, and so with all of that, how we can avoid them. Really quick, shout out to Bitdefender for sponsoring this video. As an expert in the anti-malware industry, they helped a ton with the research for this video. But we'll talk about them more in a sec. Now, I want to be clear. This video is not meant to try to scare you like a lot of the anti-malware videos that you see on the internet. Truthfully, the digital and connected worlds that we live in, malware is just something that we're gonna have to deal with, and it's actually pretty prominent. So I feel like the more we know about it, the more we know how it works, the better off we are at avoiding it, and the less, frankly, that we have to worry about it. So first off, what is malware? Technically, the term comes from a combination of the words malicious and software, but that's a pretty broad term. I mean, by that definition, I could include Premiere Pro as I swear it crashes on purpose because it's evil. So Bitdefender's definition is software that has a bad intention as far as your personal information, computer, and operating system are concerned. Now, of course, the first type of malware that is associated with that definition are viruses. But to be completely honest, that term and malware get used interchangeably, and that's not really right. We need to address that real quick. A virus is an application that can copy itself by attaching its code to other files on the system. Think like how a cold infects the cell in your body, hence the name. The worst of these would then do this and spread from computer to computer, damaging and compromising the integrity of each infected computer. For malware to be a virus, it needs to be able to infect files in this way. And honestly, since they corrupt files, they are easily identified by computers and anti-malware software. So they actually aren't really used very often by hackers nowadays accounting for less than 1% of the global threats according to Bitdefender's own studies. So while viruses are a type of malware, the two terms should not be used interchangeably. And actually the chances of you coming across a virus nowadays are actually pretty slim. So what are the most common malware types today that are causing the most damage? First up, we have keyloggers. These are essentially the malware equivalent of someone looking over your shoulder while you're at the ATM entering in your PIN code to withdraw money. This software is installed on an infected computer and intercepts everything you type and puts it into a log, hence the name, along with screenshots and mouse clicks, etc. in some cases, and then sends that log to its owner occasionally, essentially giving them your logins for things like your bank site, e-commerce sites for your credit card info, email logins, which they can then use to log into other financial accounts, etc. Now, frankly, keyloggers are difficult to detect, especially on shared computers like in a cafe, a library, a hotel, etc. And this is why you should avoid logging into anything terribly sensitive on any of these types of computers. And on your own computer, being careful not to download files from places or people that you don't know can help limit your exposure. Next up is ransomware. And this one's become very popular recently and is all over the news. According to a study by Bitdefender in 2015, ransomware caused $350 million worth of damage, and some estimates have organizations and individuals paying out over $11.5 billion in 2019, and it is only expected to continue to increase. Now, the idea behind ransomware is essentially that it infects your computer and then proceeds to encrypt all of the data on it so that you can no longer view or retrieve it. Then the program requires you to pay a ransom, usually between $300 and $900 in some form of hard to trace currency like Bitcoin, in order for you to decrypt the files and give you access to them again. And if that $11.5 billion number is anything to go by, there's no wonder that they're the malware of the moment currently. Now, the way that they are spread is again, very similar to other versions of malware here. 
usually in some sort of cleverly crafted email that has an attachment in the form of an invoice, a delivery note, resumes, or some other type of file related to what's in the email. Some ransomware though can also be disguised as advertising banners on some websites that use exploits or known vulnerabilities in usually older versions of browsers and then crash the browser and install their code. And some have even been found installed in illegal downloads found on popular torrent websites as well. Now, of course, again, be careful of any files through email or sites you don't know or trust. But because this malware also has been known to infect computers in other ways, you should take some other precautions as well. Firstly, Back up your important files regularly to a drive that is not constantly connected to your computer, as a lot of ransomware out there is able to encrypt attached storage as well, by the way. I have a quick list of some super fast and affordable drives that I just did a video on, and you can check out some of those if you need some recommendations. Next, make sure that your computer is completely up to date as well as whatever browser you are using. A lot of times they use exploits that are then patched in newer versions of both of these things. And so being on the latest version can also help. Besides that, Bitdefender actually worked with the local authorities to provide free decryptors for some of the most popular ransomware threats out there. And you can check that out at the link below. Another one of the most common types of malware that you've probably also heard of is called phishing. And technically, it's not its own software, so I don't know if it's technically malware. Whatever, it's really popular, so we're gonna include it. The idea behind this is that just like the hobby phishing that the name is based on, an attacker will send out various emails, instant messages, and even put links on social networks, forums, etc., in the hopes that someone will fall for it, click it, and end up giving up some valuable information. A common example of this is you receiving an email supposedly from your bank. It'll have your bank logos on it and other visual cues to make it seem like it is actually your bank sending the message. It's not. And it'll maybe have some sort of threat that if you don't click the link within it and validate some personal info, your account will be suspended or something of that nature. Then when you click on the link, it takes you to a fake site that looks like the correct one. And you'll put in your login credentials, for example, and then voila, the cyber criminal now has that info and can use it to access your real bank, transfer money out of it, etc. Now, since they're relying on conning you into clicking a link usually, a good way to protect yourself is to just learn to recognize these emails with a few telltale signs. Firstly, the emails generally have spelling or grammar mistakes since most of the time they aren't from a native English speaker. They're usually not personal since the attacker is again, most of the time blasting these out to a large number of people hoping that some click a la phishing again. So they'll start with dear sir, madam, user, etc. Heck, some even start with just dear, dear, clearly confused about how salutations work in English. Also, a lot of financial institutions like banks have policies where they never ask for any information from you via email. So automatically, there's a good chance that your bank also has that policy and any email coming in pretending to be from them is automatically fake. If you do get an email like that though and you want to just confirm, all you have to do is call your bank's customer support number, the one on their actual website. Don't do anything that's in the email itself and just ask them, is this real? Did this come from you? And besides that, spam filters are your first line of defense. And if you're using any sort of modern email service, these are already in place and removing some of these messages before they even reach your inbox. If any accounts you use support two-factor authentication though, you should also use that. This is usually in the settings of your account and when turned on, it requires a unique code to be sent to your phone for you to input every time you log in. Or there are special authenticator apps that you can use as well. Personally, I have this on everything and it is a great help in stopping people from gaining access to your accounts. So there is some of the most common malware out causing havoc today. Um, and hopefully this can help you uh, avoid it. If you wanna learn more about other types of malware, Bitdefender actually put together a cool resource on their blog that I'll link to below. Now, besides the precautions that I mentioned, you can, of course, also install an anti-malware program. Now, of course, the one I would recommend is, well, Bitdefender but you don't have to take my word for it. You can even check that they won product of the year from AV Comparatives, getting top marks in all seven tests and beating 15 other malware companies that you've heard of and best protection and best performance by AV test as well. Their Bitdefender Total Security 2020 is just that, total. It has ransomware protection that can actually stop your files from being encrypted, advanced threat defense tech that monitors processes and can easily identify key loggers lurking in the background, phishing filters to stop you from accidentally inputting your info where it doesn't belong, and even network monitoring, parental controls, a VPN to keep your data private, 
It works across Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows, and more. The best part? They're under $4 a month for all of it for up to five devices. And right now, you can use the link in the description and you'll even get a four month free trial to see how you like it. Check it out. There you guys, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. Um, did it teach you anything? That would be great. <laughs> let me know. Uh, also, let me know any other topics you'd like to see me decode on a future episode. If you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. Greatly appreciate it. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.